I'm Amy Lush, executive editor of Hub Culture. Delighted to be here in the studio with our partner, Handshake. Himanshi, thanks so much for coming along today. How are you? Thanks for having me here, Edie. Good to be back. So big theme at Davos has been climate. I've lost track of the number of times I've seen it on the official World Economic Forum agenda. Tell me a little bit about your story and how you view climate and water security. Sure. As you rightly said, Edie, uh, climate has always been the big theme for Davos over the last five years. In fact, uh, climate and water was identified as a top two risk facing mm -hmm. humanity by World Economic Forum alone. Uh, as far as we see it, we see it as an operator working on the ground with, uh, with the companies, uh, mostly with food and beverage companies, uh, working with them on their water security challenges, but also experiencing it uh, firsthand uh, where we, some of our employees are based in Mexico. Mm. And they came to me and said, hey, uh, our town has run out of water altogether. And what happened as a result? Uh, as a result, uh, basically, uh, some of them had to move to different towns. Mm. Uh, in fact, we hosted a small retreat in Mexico. They were so happy that uh, we uh, called them to that part of Mexico where they could actually shower. Right. So, and I think the government gave, gave them the ultimatum, right? That they actually had to move. Yeah, so basically, uh, if you look at uh, the worldwide water use, two thirds of the water use worldwide uh, is for uh, producing ingredients for, uh, hmm. for the corporate supply chains. Now, it doesn't have to be a zero sum game, hmm. uh, but it seems like uh, for now it became a zero sum game. Hmm wherein Mexico uh, calls for me that, hey, what is more important for humanity? Uh, is it beer or drinking water? Mind you, there are so many breweries operating out of Mexico. Hmm. Um, and for us uh, as a company, we believe that it doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. Right. And that's what exactly we do with, with, with a lot of food brands as helping them opt optimize uh, their water usage mm -hmm. based on how uh, water risk is evolving in the supply chains in a way that uh, benefits their top line, bottom line, but also serves community uh, in, in that locality. So give me an example of how, you, how you're working. Sure, so as an example is, uh, we work with the, the largest uh, berry supply in the world, mm -hmm. uh, Driscoll's. And we all are accustomed to having, uh, eating red lush green, sorry, red lush uh, uh, strawberries. Mm -hmm. uh, hardly anyone notices that the role water plays in, in the production of strawberries, right. as well as the quality of strawberries mm -hmm. um, as well. Uh, most of that production comes from California, and it's not just specific to, to Driscoll, but to a lot of mm -hmm. uh, agriculture producers in California. We all know that uh, uh, California has been dealing with uh, a 30-year mega drought, mm -hmm. and we should not be fooled by the, the recent rains. Of rain. Yeah, uh, we had, we, we had uh, similar wet events in 2008, 2015. Mm -hmm. We lacked some norms and look where we got after that. Yeah. So Actually, back before the, that, I would say, I mean, I remember growing up in California and we charted our water usage. And I, you know, I remember taking the, the pots from inside the, the bathroom and, and moving them outside to water, you know, the, the meager <laughs> plants that we still had leaving. So it's been going on, as you say, for a while. Absolutely. And uh, what you exactly uh, talked about your process, South Africa and Cape Town dealt with that. Mm -hmm. And that's how they were able to overcome their ground zero situation or day zero situation. Going back to California and, and strawberries, uh, we first uh, help uh, these companies identify uh, which part in their supply chain is the most vulnerable to water risk. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that at a very high resolution. It's not just about like, hey, whole of California is in the water stress. We go to a level of like, the, the basin where you were drawing water from, hmm. is that under high stress or not? Uh, if that's the case, the, is the stress uh, a long-term stress or the stress, uh, the annual volatility? So in California, as an example, uh, we receive a lot of rainfall in December like this year, mm -hmm. but then summer, uh, we probably might not receive any rainfall. So for a lot of these uh, producers, it's all about like how did, which basin do they prioritize for action? And if they know that, okay, in, across this basin, there would be more water uh, in, in, in the winters, mm. and as in summer, they can uh, deploy uh, artificial aquifer recharge technologies. Tell me a little bit about the world you see and the, the role of AI in 
stopping some of these calamities, stopping zero, what is it, day zero water events from happening? Uh, absolutely. So uh, climate is one area and water is one area where AI could be used for a lot of public good. Uh, so as an example, we, we came up with an innovation uh, for which had applications for developing uh, economies. Mm -hmm. uh, as we all know that developed countries have a lot of weather restriction infrastructure, radar infrastructure, which is pretty expensive, that allows them to forecast what, what is going to happen from precipitation, drought standpoint at this particular location. But a lot of emerging economies don't have that uh, facility available because it's very expensive to build. So everyone is uh, talking or raving about generative AI, uh, so the scientists at Climate AI used some of these applications into uh, creating, uh, I'm not sure calling it fake images is the right word mm -hmm. to use, but a very realistic image, looking images of radar infrastructure in emerging, you know, uh, in, in the US, which could then, then be, which could have an application across uh, countries like Africa, which don't have the same infrastructure available. Thank you so much, Manshu, for stopping by the Hub Culture Studio here in Davos, and I'm Edie Flash. Thank <music> you.